Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Acer Chromebook Tab 10, which is a 9.7 inch Chrome OS tablet that's designed for use in the education market. And what's interesting about this device, which sells for about $329 to education customers, is that it's the first Chrome OS tablet to ship without a keyboard. So I've actually got it working with a Bluetooth keyboard from Logitech here, mostly just so I have a stand and uh, I can enter text a little bit more efficiently. But you don't need a keyboard at all. It's designed to be used with just your fingers or with digital pen input. So for instance, if I open the web browser, we have access to regular Chrome web apps and websites. I can uh, open a task switcher and you know, basically do anything I want with my fingers. I can also run Android applications like Artflow Studio here. Let's go ahead and create a new image. And I'm going to take out the stylus, which is tucked away inside the tablet and show you that it supports pressure sensitive input. So out of the box, it can do all of those things. I went ahead and installed or switched from the stable channel software to developer channel software. That's probably something that education customers aren't really going to do because it is less stable. One of the reasons that I'm using this in portrait mode right now, for instance, is the fact that touch input doesn't work as well in landscape in developer channel. But you do get this sort of more touch friendly user interface here. And in addition to support for Google Play Store Android applications, we also see this setting here for Linux beta. And that's the main thing that I wanted to take a look at here. First time you run it, it'll download and set up a Linux virtual machine. And that'll allow you to install Linux applications that'll show up here alongside your Android applications. So you'll see that we've got Artflow, which is an Android application, uh, the Web Store, Google Play Store, Gmail, and so forth. Uh, some of these are Linux or uh, Chrome OS applications, some are Android applications. But then we also have LibreOffice, we have a terminal, and we have GIMP, uh, or GNU image editing uh, uh, software. So let's go ahead and go to the terminal, and I'll just show you how that works. It looks pretty much exactly like any, uh, any terminal window that you would find on most uh, Linux distributions, like Ubuntu or Debian, and it basically does work uh, as a Debian. And we've got... The keyboard comes up here and you can see we can sort of navigate using LS and CD and so forth. This is a little bit easier to do if you're not trying to do it with one hand while it hangs out on a stand here. But you can also install applications using sudo apt install. Let's install Lynx. And Lynx is a funny thing to install on a Chrome book because it's basically a web browser, but it's a text-based web browser. And we can launch it just by typing links. And that's not what I want. So there's Lilliputing. Now, there are some things that are a little bit weird about this. So sudo apt install. Let's find one that takes a little bit more work. Abbey Word, for instance. You'll notice that the keyboard sort of stays up here and covers the screen. I can minimize the keyboard and then tap to bring up the keyboard again, and now it doesn't cover the screen. So it's a little bit quirky. Uh, part of that, I think, is because of the fact that it's beta software. And if I wanted to, I could again switch on the Bluetooth keyboard. And now, when I want to type something, the on-screen keyboard doesn't come up at all. So that's basically how it works in terms of installing Linux applications. How about running them? Uh, let's go ahead and exit this and load LibreOffice. So we've got basically the full desktop version of the software. 
we can open files, we can save, we can go through wizards. Let's say I wanted to create a letter. Actually, this is a fax. I'll go through the wizard for a letter. And, you know, it basically has all the features that you would expect from the desktop version of this uh, Office Editor application. It's a little bit funny in terms of sort of how it looks, because you can see we've got the little X window up here, we've got the file and everything else. Uh, it's not really optimized for touch screens the way that some of the other applications are here. And then the window manager is still the Chrome OS window manager, so you can swipe down from the top uh, to open or close. And we can access multiple applications here using the task switcher. Uh, there is support for multi-screen to a certain degree, so I can, for instance, bring up LibreOffice in one window and Chrome in another. But it's uh, it doesn't have the same sort of windowed support that you would get if you were using sort of the, the desktop or laptop version of Chrome OS or Linux or other operating systems. Um, it extends the functionality. It allows you to do things like run GIMP to edit images or use LibreOffice to open documents uh, if you don't want to use, for whatever reason, Google Docs or an online image editing application. And you don't need to use Crouton or anything else to um, this is having issues opening. You don't need to install a different uh, a full-fledged Linux operating system on your own using Crouton and switch between environments. Everything runs as if it were just a single operating system. Image crop. And you can edit images this way. You can save them. Um, now, it's not exactly all running like one operating system if you look at the file manager because here's the list of screenshots that I've taken on Chrome. They're showing up in my download folder but there's also a Linux files section. So in order to open that file in GIMP, I needed to actually copy something from the Chrome area over to the Linux area. So there's no distinction between Linux apps and uh, Chrome OS apps and Android apps here. If I installed, for instance, uh, uh, Gmail for Android, you would probably see a Gmail logo and another Gmail logo, and it's not always clear which one's which. So there's still some kinks that need working out, I think, as of uh, when I'm shooting this video in early July, July 9th of 2018, this is a developer channel feature. It's not necessarily uh, fully polished. It doesn't make it entirely clear the distinction between the different sort of platforms. It also complicates the experience of using Chrome OS a little bit. So while it gives you more power, you can run Android apps and Linux apps and Chrome OS apps. Uh, one of the appeals, especially for, I think, education customers of Chrome OS, is that it's a simplified operating system. Uh, you just log in with your Google name and, uh, and password, and you have access to all of your data and settings. It allows educators, for instance, to have students sign on in different machines and not have to worry that they've lost access to certain apps or certain data or files that were saved and so forth. Um, it allows uh, educators who are using things like Google Classroom and Google uh, for Education to let uh, users log into Khan Academy and other things by just logging into the device with their Google password. Um, and it allows that uh, if anything goes wrong with one of the tablets or computers or anything else, it can be pretty much wiped very easily and you just log back in with your user account again. Once you start complicating things by adding support for native Linux desktop applications, I think you lose some of those simplicity features. You lose a little bit of the security you use, uh, even though everything's running in a sandboxed environment. You sort of uh, create more potential for things to go wrong. Um, so it's really more of a power user feature, and I get the feeling that Linux app support is designed uh, more for developers and advanced users. So this is sort of a weird device to check it out on. It just happens to be the Chromebook that I have handy right now that is capable of running Linux applications. Uh, would you want to use Linux applications within Chrome OS without installing a different operating system on a slate? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure if it makes a ton of sense on this particular device. It makes a lot more sense, I think, on laptop style devices where much of what you need to do you can get done in Chrome OS or using Android applications, but there might just be a couple of apps that you want to run native Linux uh, desktop style applications, and this does make it possible to do that. So again, we saw LibreOffice, we saw GIMP, 
Um, LibreOffice is actually a suite, so we have access to not just a word processor, but spreadsheet and presentation applications and uh, so forth. So it does add a little bit more power, a little bit more functionality. Uh, it makes the experience of using the whole thing a little bit more confusing, but it is still a work in progress, and I think it's uh, pretty interesting to see where Google is going with this. So that's a quick look at Linux applications running on the Chromebook Tab 10. I'll have a full review of the tablet coming out soon, talking a little bit more about um, how it's designed for use in the education market, but it does sort of present a look at things to come if we start to see more Slate-only uh, tablets that don't ship with keyboards that are running Google's Chrome operating system. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and the Chromebook Tab 10.